Hi everybody, it's Alyssa and welcome back to my kitchen for week six of the CSA box from the Green Team and Flop Town Farms. I did not get a box last week. I skipped my box, so I have a lot of extra stuff this week. So technically this is my fifth video, but it is week six. So I'm gonna show you everything that I got. I got a lot of stuff, I'm really excited. Um, let's see, where are we gonna start? Bag one, okay. I got two of the blueberries because I love blueberries. And then I got an assortment of squash and cucumber. fennel complete with look at these fronds still on the fennel. I love fennel. Um, I've been eating it for a long time. I know it's one of those polarizing ingredients, but I do have recipes here today that use the whole fennel. So I have been talking these whole six weeks about using the entire vegetable because it's, it's good for you and it's less wasteful. So I do have recipes for both parts. Actually, the recipe that I'm going to do for my dinner tonight uses the bowl. And there's another recipe in here that sounds great and I actually have the ingredients for it. So I'll have that later this week. What else? These awesome carrots, again with the greens. You can do sauteed carrot greens. Apparently they're also very good in your green smoothie. The carrots are going to play a part in the dinner that we're making tonight. My favorite kale, the Lacinato kale, again, I just think that this texture in a kale chip in the oven or air fryer is the best. Unbeatable for kale chips. These beets complete with the edible beet greens. So we've done some, I've shared some recipes in the past that talk about these hearty greens and you wilt them down. So. I will save these for something else, which is what I've been doing with pretty much everything. I've been chopping off the tops and saving the green. But these beets, they're beautiful. And I have some specialty goat cheese in my fridge that I found on sale. So I'm going to do one of the many recipes that's beets, roasted beets and goat cheese. And I'm gonna have that later on this week. I have some mint. My whole office smelled amazing today because of the mint. And then it smelled amazing yesterday as well because if you also follow along with the monthly spice up your kitchen, by coincidence, yesterday's herb was mint. So um, I've actually just been picking off little pieces of mint and tossing it in my ice water. Really refreshing and it smells so good. But there are definitely some things that we can do with mint that I will share with you. And then I will also share the links to the recipes for the spice pamphlet, if you didn't get the spice pamphlet, because there are some really good ones in there as well. So now I have a lot of mint, which is awesome. And then the mescaline salad mix, which is just amazing on its own. I have a lot of, um, I'm sure I've mentioned it before, I always prep my plain protein, so either plain pork chops or plain chicken ground or breast or thigh and I, I leave it and then every morning I decide what I'm going to do with it or every night. So I'm going to, um, probably not tonight, tonight I have something different planned in mind, but probably for tomorrow I'm just gonna do a big, big mixing bowl of salad greens, maybe some of my leftover carrots from today and I'm gonna season up my protein and have a really, really big hearty fresh salad. So this is very exciting. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna use the fennel and the carrots today. I am going to try to put all of this in my fridge and then I will be right back to get started with our meal and I will show you through the cookbooks as well. All right, normally I do like to show you through my Kindle edition of the America's Test Kitchen TV show cookbook. My Kindle is currently charging in another room so we will not do that today. But again, rest assured there are plenty of things in the index of that and it is available. Last time I checked, it is available digitally on Libby but it is also available at our library. So if you're really at a loss, I'm telling you it's the best cookbook for when you don't know what to cook and every single recipe is always a win. What I do have for you though is 
also from America's Test Kitchen. It is the Dinner Illustrated 175 Meals Ready in One Hour or Less. Okay, so if you have garlic and still an abundance of kappa of, I was gonna say cabbage, this calls for Napa cabbage, kappa. Um, it uses Napa cabbage um, and not fennel, but fennel seeds. Uh, this is garlicky roasted shrimp with Napa cabbage and orange salad. So you brine your shrimp, you make a little salad with shaved cabbage and your garlic and some little orange pieces. Uh, and then you make a dressing. If you don't like the raw garlic, you could probably toss it on the stove just to brown it and get rid of some of that strength from a raw garlic, but this is supposed to be garlicky, so. The next recipe that um, is the one that actually I'm going to do later on this week, it's fideos with chickpeas, fennel, and kale. So it's sort of a lesser known cousin of Spanish paella, and this is a vegan version. It uses, instead of rice, broken noodles. So you grab some spaghetti and you break it. Um, and it uses, kale also so if you are like me and you're getting kale every single week it uses kale it uses your fennel bulb and you want to make sure you have these nice beautiful green fronds because you are going to use that as well garlic your garlic cloves diced tomatoes chickpeas smoked paprika and dry white wine so let's see what you do um, you're going to slice the fennel bulb nice and thin. You're gonna chop your onion and mince your garlic. And you're gonna save some of these green fronds, but not the tough, stalky part here. Um, the fronds you'll use as a garnish at the end. If you didn't, if you don't have these, if maybe you just got, this recipe sounds good, you didn't get fennel this week and it kind of sounds good to you, you can use parsley if you can't find a bulb of fennel with the fronds still intact. So you basically just kind of put everything all in one pan. It's a one pan dish, and then you bake it off in the stove at the very end. Um, and when the pasta comes out, you let it cool, you sprinkle a little lemon, these fennel fronds, and that's that. The next one, again for garlic, but also some people are getting eggplant in their boxes, a stir-fried eggplant with garlic basil sauce. So this is served over a white rice and it's sort of an Asian-inspired sauce. So um, brag liquid aminos, which is a substitute for soy sauce. It's got the same flavor profile, but really good if you don't eat soy or wheat. Uh, brown sugar, cornstarch, red pepper flakes, eggplant, bell pepper, six garlic cloves. So if you've got that garlic and you're looking for something to showcase it, six garlic cloves, ginger, scallions, uh, fresh basil. So again, this is a great recipe to showcase what comes in these boxes. So I think that just sounds really easy and really awesome. All right, next book. The next one is Everyday Food, and this is from the kitchens of Martha Stewart Living. Uh, fresh flavors fast, 250 easy, delicious recipes for any time of day. The first one is also for your eggplant. It's an eggplant caponata, so it's like a relish, and it's really, really good on top of a crostini, or as a quick pasta sauce, it says, or as a sandwich spread, okay. Um, it can also be spooned over broiled white fish, such as a flounder or tilapia. So it's olive oil, onion, golden raisins, pine nuts, garlic cloves, your eggplant, tomato paste, red pepper flakes, um, cocoa powder, which is interesting, your eggplant, white wine vinegar, and some salt and water. for your mint and also your zucchini or eggplant. Eggplant also tastes good with a mint yogurt sauce. We have a mint feta sauce with grilled Greek chicken kebabs. So, and it's served with a lemon and pine nut rice. So this shows your kebabs with peppers and zucchini and chicken. And then this feta sauce, which is made with feta, yogurt, and mint leaves. So, but again, you can sub out your vegetables for 
for other things, I mean, eggplant is also really, really good with yogurt, if you remember. If you have done the spices with me quite some time back, we did the eggplant with a yogurt sumac sauce and it was absolutely amazing. And that was when sumac was our spice of the month. So eggplant on these kebabs would be awesome. But a lot of us are still getting our zucchini every week, so you could do that too. I really like in this cookbook, they have these little quick recipes. Um, they'll have pages of these groupings of four. And so if you're looking for, oh, what's a good quick spring vegetable side dish? Uh, this has leeks, vinaigrette, asparagus with lemon butter, and something that we have, shaved carrot salad with green onions and sesame seeds. Or if you're not sure what to do with your snack peas other than eating them raw, you can figure out or learn here in this book how to do a nice, easy snap pea saute. But it also does include red onions and some lemon juice. Um, again, another grouping of four. This is shaved vegetable salad and slaws. So if you're getting cabbage every week, but you're kind of starting to wonder what else to do with it, maybe you've done cooked cabbage or like I've done uh, cabbage cups, you can do a cabbage and fennel slaw. Um, so you're also going to use the fronds for this. You're gonna discard these stalks. You're going to grate, coarsely grate the fennel bulb and your cabbage and then you're gonna to top it with some of these beautiful green fronds and put that all in the bowl. Um, a cucumber salad with sour cream and dill, and then a quick marinated yellow squash salad. You could do it with the regular zucchini as well, but this is lemon juice, olive oil, your squash, and a shallot, and some thyme. I think there's been some thyme available at the store too. Um, and another one, rice salads and sides. Which one did I see here? Oh, this is for your mint. This is really awesome. It's a curried rice salad. So it's curry powder, a long grain brown rice, lime juice, red seedless grapes, um, roasted unsalted cashews, and chopped fresh mint. It brings the whole thing alive. Mint with a curry is actually delicious. So, so good. Um, I don't think there's anything else on this page that had it. Don't forget, if you're still trying to figure out what to do with your parsley, you can use it as a topper almost everywhere. This also has a rice pilaf with toasted almonds recipe, and you top it with parsley. All right, so that's, that's this for this book. All right, the last book and the one that I'm cooking from right now is At My Table by Nigella Lawson. The first recipe I've actually done before in the old version of book cooks, this recipe is so unfairly delicious and simple. This is for your garlic. This is chili cheese garlic bread. So basically you just grab a huge loaf of beautiful crusty bread and you um, kind of cut it almost, you know, like how everyone's doing that Hasselback style everything and you just fill it with butter, garlic, and red pepper flakes and cheese, and then you bake it, and then it's like a pull-apart bread, and the butter and garlic soak right up into it, and then the cheese is kind of on some of the pieces too. It's absolutely amazing. I highly recommend this recipe, chili cheese, garlic bread. Let's see what else. Uh, this is what we're going to be making today carrots and fennel with harissa. So it's just a little roasted um, vegetable dish. So it's carrots, fennel, harissa, and um, little a little clementine and just olive oil and flaky salt or like kosher salt. Really, really simple. As usual, I'm gonna use my little, my little oven on here uh, because it's just too hot for me to heat up the regular oven. This one preheats so much faster and doesn't give off nearly as much heat as my gas stove. So when I want to do roasted veggies like this, but I really don't want to turn on the stove, what a lifesaver. Um, again, a beet and goat cheese salad. This has a passion fruit dressing, which is something I haven't seen before. And I, I guess I can see that how the brightness and tartness of the passion fruit goes well with the tanginess of goat cheese and the earthiness of a beet. So that's really cool. Um, 
and then you can top it with some fronds of dill or you can do some probably some fronds of this guy your fennel here and what else and for blueberries i i just like to put them in my yogurt or just eat them as a snack but if you want to do something special this is a lemon tender cake with a blueberry compote look at how pretty this is So blueberry compote, it just cooks down, it's delicious, it's fresh. You can also just do a blueberry compote and you can put that on your yogurt, any kind of cake, but blueberry and lemon, they play so nicely with each other. So this cake also utilizes some coconut milk for the richness and the fat. The compote is blueberry, lemon, sugar, water, cornstarch, and it's topped with a coconut milk yogurt kind of topping. Uh, so coconut milk, yogurt, vanilla extract, and confectioner sugar all together. So this is actually a wonderful summer dessert. It's nice and light. As always, if you're struggling to figure out what to do with some of your greens or your salad greens and you're bored with some of your usual salads, when you go to the index of almost any cookbook, there will be a section on salads and lettuce. Um, let's see, where are we? Salads. Um, Cucumber and radish salad, the beet and goat cheese salad, boulder wheat and sliced almonds salad, chopped salad, parsley salad and caper salad, um, quinoa salad with walnuts and radishes. There's just so many, and this is just in this cookbook, but pretty much every cookbook will have some kind of salad or lettuce section that you can use a lot of your greens for. A lot of times, like one of them I saw today that I didn't bring home had a section for Swiss chard, but remember a lot of the heartier greens, um, you can you can kind of sub in so those really thick leaves so maybe the ones on my beets um something like that all right so i'm going to get started i'm going to tidy up over here and start to prep and i'm going to preheat my little oven to 350 degrees and then we're going to get going this should be nice and quick because i'm not going to film the whole time that it's roasting but i will show you how to prep it and we're going to have fun all right I'm just snacking on some of my fennel right here because that's just who I am. Um, I have saved some of the greens from the fennel. I've trimmed my carrots, I'm gonna peel them. But first I wanted to, um, in, in true me fashion, I thought that I had harissa. I don't actually have harissa because I use it so often. Uh, like I said, when I do plain proteins. Mm, that's probably not in this cut. I cook a lot of plain proteins for the week and then when it's time for me to make lunch or dinner, I'll slather it in some kind of sauce or seasoning and then put it over a vegetable. Usually for me, that is um, like a buffalo sauce, harissa, or sometimes I'll do like a teriyaki kind of sauce. So I used up all of my harissa and forgot about it. So what I do have and a good substitute, you can do something like sriracha. I have a gochujang, which is a Korean red pepper paste and then you want to add curry to it so a curry powder that's a pretty dominant flavor in harissa so harissa is like a chili flake chili powder uh, not chili powder chili paste with oil and uh, something like cumin or curry powder and then i'm going to mix it with some olive oil so i'm going to mix that together quickly and then i will go ahead and clean my carrots off screen and prep all of this while my oven is still preheating So, I'm going to grab a little bit of my gochujang, which is pretty spicy. Um, harissa is not always spicy. You can buy it in different strengths, but gochujang is, depending. I mean, they have ones that are not as spicy, but it is pretty spicy. I think Trader Joe's also has right now a gochujang. It's, it's like a sauce in a almost looking like a salad dressing bottle and that's a lot less spicy and very sesame forward which you know I don't know if I like that but uh, this curry powder in particular is a spicy one so I'm just gonna have a lot of extra spice here but I think some of that will be nice with the uh, citrus juice and mix that all together. Just kind of 
because it, it is like you can see it's a very thick paste the goju dye and again that depends on the brand and which one you're getting um this one's definitely just like a big old tub of, of pretty thick paste but i've gotten ones before that are a little less thick maybe a little less spicy and they come in a squeeze bottle just depends um you can go to your local um i have a korean supermarket right down the street from me you can go to h mart but Harissa, I think, is also not too difficult to find in most grocery stores. So, just trying to break this up a little bit. I think I need some more oil and just to kind of keep breaking this up. All right, so I'm gonna peel my carrots and prep my carrots. And then I'm gonna mix this all together and put it right in the oven. That's how easy this is. All right, here we go. Okay, so I'm just prepping my carrots. I've peeled, uh, washed and peeled them. I think she cuts them in the book sort of lengthwise, um, almost like matchsticks. I'm just doing these nice, nice long diagonal pieces. Not ready for you, actually. Stay warm. Okay. And then I'm just tossing them right into my bowl. I added, I did add a little bit of tomato paste to thin out the um, hot pepper paste. I didn't do all of my carrots. Um, save some just for snacking and dipping into some dips and sauces. All right, so I'm gonna do a couple pieces of the fennel. So I'm just doing some nice thin cuts of the fennel, tossing that into the sauce as well. I've tried a roasted fennel before and it didn't come out right. It just sort of dried up. I guess I didn't have enough oil on it, or maybe I cooked it too long. It sort of dried up and became really leathery and hard to chew. So I'm curious to see how this is going to turn out for me here. Okay, um, give that a little mix. Make sure everything's totally coated. Okay, I'm gonna get my zester, my microplane. I have thoroughly washed these little oranges. Remember, we are using the zest, so we do want to make sure that we are thoroughly washing it. All right, so we're going to do some of this. That citrus will add just another element, another layer of flavor. I think last time I talked a lot about layers of flavor. It's bright, it's fragrant. Remember, we're just aiming to get that top layer off where the beautiful oils are. If you are getting too much of the white stuff, the pit, it gets really bitter, which is not what we're looking for. Okay, and I'm just gonna scrape that off with my spoon. Sort of all collects in the back of the microplane there and you just sort of <laughs> scrape it off okay. and then i'm going to go ahead and cut this in half and just give it a good squeeze and get some juice in there as well Probably enough. I'm making obviously a very small serving, so this is probably enough. I will snack on this one. Okay, so I've got my spoon. I'm just gonna mix it all together. So see, I'm just making sure that everything is coated in that um, harissa, gochujang, sriracha, whatever it is. And the, the spicy and the cumin, it just goes really well with the earthiness of everything. All right, let's see if we wanna do any seasoning now. Let's see. I'm gonna toss in some coarse salt here. Kosher salt is good. I have a coarse sea salt. Um, it's just like a nice pop of brightness and it really, again, it just adds to the flavor here. I'm gonna put this on my, see over here, I have a prepared baking sheet. It's lined with foil. And again, my oven is at 350. And so it says that you're gonna do anywhere from 30 to 50 minutes, and you do wanna toss everything through halfway. Again, I'm doing a smaller batch, and my oven runs pretty hot, so I will probably do more like 30 minutes. So I'm going to get that going, and I will be back to show you the final results in half an hour or so. 
Okay, so that took a lot less time because these little things, if you have one of these countertop toaster oven air fryer things, they're kind of beasts. Um, hers was all nicely roasted and mine is very browned. I'm not mad about it though. I'm glad that I checked because like I said, um, the one time I sort of over roasted my fennel and it just got too tough. I am now realizing that this recipe doesn't actually call for any of the fronds, but they are actually really good. So they have um, sort of a less intense licorice flavor than regular fennel does. It's a little greener, uh, I guess is a good way. If you are a veggie person, you understand what I mean. So I'm just gonna kind of shred some of this right on top, just for some freshness to this roasted dish here. You know what's interesting is I can actually smell the orange juice and the zest. I can smell all of that. That's really awesome. All right, so this is what it looks like. It's all nice and roasted up. I'm gonna grab a piece of fennel first. Mmm. Oh, it's very sweet. A lot of heat at the back of my throat. It's very sweet. If you normally don't like fennel, and you're, you're sort of, oh, I thought I would try it for this box, but I'm not sure. It's almost got no flavor, but it's got a little sweetness at the top. It's just like a regular roasted vegetable. Don't really have any of that licorice flavor. It's a really nice vehicle for the heat and the sweet and the salt. This is very good. grab one of the carrots now. Mm. These carrots are so good and so fresh. I love spice. I love warmth with carrots. This is awesome. I'm not gonna be able to stop eating this. I'm also gonna make this all the time now. This is really so good. And I'm glad that I used a nice big sea salt. So again, use a kosher salt or a flaky sea salt because those pops of saltiness are really nice. So there's a little sweetness here, a little fragrance from the orange. It's not very dominant at all. And then as I said, you could dial down the spiciness as much as you would like. You don't need to use um, a spicy harissa or a gochujang. You could use a they have milder versions of all those, or as I did, I cut it with some tomato paste. You're not really ruining the recipe. This is amazing. So good. I definitely suggest this, give it a try. It's amazing, it was really, really quick to do. And then I just love a, a roast, a low roasted recipe because it's just so passive. I just have to prep the vegetables and then I put it in there and then I go about the rest of my day and it's all done for me already. So if you're skeptical of fennel, this is the recipe to try that may win you over for good. You don't need to eat it raw like I do. You can try roasted fennel and this is just an absolutely amazing, one of a kind, I mean, maybe it's not one of a kind, but I never would have thought to do something like this with fennel. Give it a try. I hope everyone enjoys their boxes this week. Thanks again to Flocktown Farm for delivering to the library and thanks to the green team for organizing it. All right, I will see you all next time.